I mentioned earlier that logarithms are, are actually exponents. If you look uh, at the definition of logarithm from the exponential function, y equals b to the x, then the equivalent equation is x equals log y base b. And, and you notice that x is the exponent of b over here, and x equals a logarithm. So that's, that's what that means, that uh, logarithms are literally exponents. And um, the, the rules of exponents that you learn in beginning algebra uh, translate over quite well to logarithms. And uh, so that's what we're going to be exploring in this whole section, these, these various uh, capabilities of logarithms. And um, so I want to um, think about this as, um, as inverse functions. For example, if I replace this x with this formulation of x. Now, now remember, this is by definition. But if we agree, OK, this is how we're going to define what x equals to. If I replace x up here, then we have y equals to b raised to the log y. Yep, let me write that a little, a little neater. b to the log y base b. All right. And if we did a similar substitution over here, if I took the expression for y, which is b to the x, and replaced y here, then I get a, another equation over here, which says that x equals to the log base b of b to the x. Now this is, um, in essence, taking advantage of the inverse uh, properties of the exponent versus the logarithm functions. One function is the inverse of the other. And so it literally undoes it. For example, here, uh, this function, the input is y. b is a constant. The input is y, and you get y as an answer. It's because the b and the log cancel one another. Literally, literally, they cancel. And over here, it's, it's the same idea. The input to this function is x, and the log cancels the exponent function b, leaving x. So um, now that's, that's going to come in pretty handy in exploring the, the properties of logarithms. And we can already uncover uh, two of them right immediately here. For example, uh, let's see. What if, let me take this, this expression here, uh, x equals to log base b of b to the x. And remember, x is a positive number, and we also don't let x equal to 1. I'm sorry, I'm talking about b. b is a positive number. The base is a positive number. b is not equal to 1. But b is a constant number. It's fixed. x is a variable. But what if we decided that x was equal to 1? If x was equal to 1, then you have x equals to, I'm sorry, you have 1 equals to the log base b of b to the first power. Or, literally, and let me write this over here as a property, the log base b of b equals to 1. Now that's a property that, that holds no matter what the base is. You know, if this is base 3, log 3 base 3 is, is 1. Log 7 base 7 is 1. So that's a constant property. You can see it quite easily by just replacing x with 1, and you have this property. Okay. Now there's a, another interesting property here. If instead of replacing x with 1, what if I replaced it with 0? So I'll put a 0 here. So 0 equals log base b, b to the 0. But b to the 0 equals to 1. So here we have another logarithm property, the log of 1 base b is equal to 0. All right, so these two properties are independent of what number the base happens to be. The log of 1 in any base, all logarithms of 1 are always 0. And when the base is agreed, the logarithm is 1. So that's, that's something you can hang your hat on regardless of what base you're, you're working in. So there's our first uh, two properties of logarithms. 
and we'll go on and look at some, some more properties here.